What's up guys? Good morning. This is Captain A3E with an R aircraft review. And this is a very special aircraft review for all you World War II buffs out there. And I don't know if Gemini Jets, uh, JC Wings, Blue Box, In Flight, or Herpa, or uh, Hogan has this aircraft, but I have this aircraft anyway. This is the Douglas C-47 Dakota. The United States Army Air Force 91st Troop Carrier Wing, stationed in England in 1944. Now, this is by Skymarks. This is a scale 11500. Now, the U.S. Army Air Force had commandeered most of the C-47s into service as as the U.S. went into World War II after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The first of the C-47s arrived into service by 1942. By January of that year, now I'm going to give you a tour of the aircraft, starting with the the cockpit windows and well, the cockpit windows and windshield wipers. The two prime Whitney piston engines. They have a pair of right cyclone R twenty eight hundred piston engines. Now I'll well, take you on. The aircraft, even though there's no L1 door, there's a door right there. And bring on the wings of the C-47. And the D-Day markings. Which this aircraft part had participated in in the parachute invasion <clears throat> by by units of the US Army's 82nd and 101st Airborne behind enemy lines before the Allied invasion on D-Day June 6, 1944. Now, as uh, a double door that you can see there, the C-47 could carry a, a jeep or a packed howitzer that can be placed in and about 82 soldiers could climb into the C-47 taking him back to the to the tail of the aircraft nothing there, there's no APU and the horizontal stabilizers and the tail The registration of this aircraft, which is two nine two one, excuse me, two nine two nine two seven one seven. This aircraft was uh, built at at Douglas's El Segundo facility in uh, El Segundo, California. Bring along the wings. And the number of the aircraft on the uh, on the fuselage eight Y. And if you can't see it, there's nose art right there. The C forty seven would serve the U.S. Army Air Force, the U.S. Navy, and the U.S. Marine Corps for our World War Two. The Korean War, until the U.S. Army had completely, well, until the U.S. Army had completely phased the C-47 out of operations by 1968, and 
as members of the uh, the 82nd and the 101st Airborne from uh, Fort Bragg in Georgia would parachute from this aircraft, but this aircraft was used for a number of other different missions. It was used um, to transport the wounded and uh, to bring VIPs such as General, General Douglas MacArthur or Chester W. Nimitz <clears throat> to a major area and... Um, the aircraft would basically would be escorted by Bell P-39 Aero Cobras or Curtis P-40s or Lockheed P-38 Lightnings. Um, in the Vietnam War, the, the C-47 was converted as a gunship and it was used to drop propaganda leaflets during the Vietnam War and a number of C-40s, well, both FC and AC-47s were lost in action over Vietnam and the aircraft was later replaced by the Lockheed Martin AC-130 Hercules gunship. Um, today, there are maybe about Hundreds, well, maybe <clears throat> hundreds or few C 47s that are still flying today. Here in Florida, at well, in Titusville, uh, the Tico Warbird, excuse me, the uh, Tico Warbird Museum has a C 47 just like this one, but it's called Tico Bell. I'll give you a bird's eye view of the aircraft. A very nice detail by Skymarks. And I'll give you this view right here. The aircraft has served with a number of nations throughout, throughout its long career. It served with uh, Greece. It served with uh, Britain. Uh, it served with numerous air forces that includes um, both Australia, New Zealand, uh, China, and India for for our World War Two. And the Israeli Defense Force also acquired a C forty seven Dakota. Back around in 1958, at <clears throat> the production on this plane had stopped in 1945, but there were still hundreds of these that were still flying prior to after 1940. Prior to after 1945, so. That's it for this review on the Douglas C-47 Dakota. And like I always say, like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around.